one is definitely important because not everybody in our day and age is so connected to history. It's more so, oh, who has the new iPod or who has this? It's not what happened, how can we fix it, and how can we keep it going? History is a very important part because without it, we wouldn't be here today. Learning a greater aspect of what we're trying to preserve in the national parks and um, why we should care about preserving the national parks because of how beautiful they are and what they, sure, um, what they serve to show us. It teaches us who we are and it shows us how we got here and the struggles we've overcome to get here so we can't waste our struggles to, to just waste them so we have to live them out. History is important because it protects cultural identities and it protects the how people are related to one another. It keeps communities together. It's for you guys to learn, but most, important, most importantly, to teach us how you see heritage preservation through your eyes. What we work towards is an SOS for historic places. And what does the S stand for? Sustainability. What does the O stand for? Opportunity. What does the other S stand for? Leadership. I want to say thank you to everyone for coming into uh, this old creaky floor this evening to have dinner. Walking into this building is like walking into, into a history book. I want everybody to pay attention to the details in the building and, uh, and uh, just, and uh, there's a little museum out in the lobby and a little glass thing where you can see a lot of the, we found an old newspaper down there from 1938 in the basement. Preservation to me is the um, restoration and uh, management of historic places and um, artifacts. Oh, I think history is important because we can learn from history and we can apply it to the future. Preservation to me is protecting our past and bringing it back up to our generation, letting our age group, our generation know what it was like back then. Preservation is a word I would sum up like stories because stories are what mm -hmm. fuel us to actually want to preserve anything else. Yes, we got our rod. We're throwing it in. We're reeling it in. Reel it. <laughs> what happens when you reel it in? It's We're big. So <laughs> we look to each other and we blow it up. That's too complicated. I know. I'm not sure. Forest Fossil Beds is a 6,000 6, acre national monument and uh, it's a world famous fossil site. We get visitors from all 50 states and all continents every year. It's said in this valley when uh, settlement was first occurring in the valley that there was so much petrified wood on top of the ground, it was difficult to navigate a wagon through this valley. Protection of our resources is foremost in our mission, and we want to make sure that they're here for your kids and your grandkids to come and see and have the same experience that you have when you're here today. that the date from the coring showed the scar from the year 1670. As you guys look out here, you can see this beautiful field that we've got out here. It's very dry right now, but beautiful field out there. There is no shale out there. It's eroded all the way down to the mudstone layer because it did not have this conglomerate rock on top. The middle level is where we find the majority of the fossils. The upper layers, we also find a lot of fossils in there, some very nice examples of stuff. A lower level, very little if nothing at all. This is what all the cool kids do, so all of you guys have to do this as well. You want to sniff a tree, okay? You want to sniff the trees. You want to get right there into the crack and give it a great big sniff. You can smell something kind of sweet. A lot of people usually say vanilla or butterscotch, something along that line. And what that is, is that's the vanillin in the sap that the ponderosa trees produce just naturally. What does it smell like? Vanilla. Okay. It's a tree. It smells like wood. What does it smell like? Wood? It does smell like vanilla. So this is the world famous big stump. It literally is world famous because when this was being run as a tourist attraction, they used this stump and all of their brochures and pamphlets and everything else to try and advertise to get the people to come out here and visit this area here. They named it the Big Stump, even though, like I mentioned before, it is not the biggest stump. 
I'm kind of interested that there were buildings here that were just torn down, and I kind of want to know like why why they were taken down instead of just left here and petrified like they were because that would be cool as part of history if we were talking about Charlotte, the lady that found all the fossils and she lived over here and I think that would be an important part of history. So I'm touching a very, very old tree. Four score and seven million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like stone. It's like... Perfect. I'm going to talk to you about uh, the special significance of the tree to the uh, Ute nation. So the Ute people have five different special cultural trees that they use for in their spiritual work. The one is the prayer trees and the medicine trees, burial trees, prophecy trees, and message trees. How did the Utes decide which trees to use as medicine trees? Other people. Uh, would have a dream when they did their vision quest when they started in their work where the trees would come to them and so that would be their medicine power and so then when they go to heal somebody then that tree is going to appear to them in a dream or a vision and say I am this tree come to me and use my flesh for the healing. Some other things that are found around here would be the topaz which is found in the terrials just to the north of Lake George. Going to look for gemstones and just pretty much anything that seems out of the ordinary on rocks and uh, point it out and see if we can identify it. I found some quartz down on the ground. And then there's a bit of Amazonite on the edge right here, the little blue piece. I found this one, it's really, really white, so I think that's kind of cool. And this one's pretty cool. Mine's fun. It's pretty. And then I just found a big chunk of smoky quartz, so that looks pretty cool too. So, I like it. Uh, the Mlazy Sea has only been here for 20 years, but the ranch itself was born in 1906, so it's over 100 years old. These cabins that you see behind you are part of the original ranch. Each morning we start at 7 o'clock. We usually go to the office first and get a ride schedule on what's going on. It's really important to me and to the rest of the ranch that we pre preserve the history of the ranch. So it's my job to make sure these cabins stay updated as far as safety, obviously, and also their history. I want to make sure people are aware of their history. You know, some people, they stay for a long time. They just want to be a cowboy for a day or two. And it's really important to them to share that with their family, and, and we're able to do that. You work really, 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 really hard here, <laughs> but at the same time, everything is taken care of. You live here, you eat here, you play here.
have a partner dance. Yes. about the power in this tree, how it was struck, it was touched by our Creator, how the prayers were sent, were put into this tree, and where the medicine was. And then we have to think where, which direction it's sitting at. So all of these prayer trees will point to that Pikes Peak, no matter where we are in this valley. And I pray that hopefully these ancestors here will help you and guide you along. So when you touch this tree, if you believe, or if you don't believe, you know that's, that the seed is planted like this caterpillar that I see. You know, we're all starting young. We're all, we're all starting at one point. But eventually, what does a caterpillar become? A butterfly. We're here today on the uh, Beale Placer site. It's a mine that's being reclaimed. Um, it's a placer mine a long time ago, and uh, now the work has been done to fill in all of those old pits and kind of recontour the area, and uh, we're trying to get it revegetated again. The health of the watershed, of the ground that the water moves over, is of paramount importance to the quality of the water that ends up downstream that people use. We're going to try and turn all this gravel back into a nice, beautiful field. My group is loving out the ground so they can put seed in uh, so the soil so we can put more trees in and it will look like a forest like it's around us. This bucket with dirt and uh, then I'm carrying it around dumping it where there needs to be some more dirt and then everyone else spreads it spreads it out so they can put the seeds on it. Paris Mill uh, site. It's currently owned by Park County. This mill, we're not going to go in it, but it has, still has most of its equipment. The stamps the jar was talking about, a lot of the processing that they did for it, classifiers, um, float cells, all that kind of thing are still in the mill. This is huge because during World War II especially, a lot of sites that were accessible took all of the metal out of the building and used it as scrap. So it's really neat that we have a building here that not only has its site, but also has its inner workings, all the engineering inside. Um, we actually started Cabin the end of May this year. We're about halfway done. I think as of last night, we have 26 new little kids out there. Um, we got about 25 more or so to go. Um, all together, we have about 100 on the place. Come on guys, come have some cookies. Yeah. One thing about animals, mamas are mamas. Yeah. She 
Lexi's looking for a cookie. They don't have teeth on the top, so they really can't bite you. You just gotta watch their horns a little bit. We are at High Plains Ranch up in the mountains, and we are meeting some cows, and they're very friendly. As you can see, they have a lot longer hair, and they're also smaller, and so they're good for this climate because they have the longer hair, which keeps them warm, and they're really, really beautiful. And so like our ranch lady, like, she grows them because they were cute, in which they really are. That's something you can say every day. I'm being followed by a herd of animals. Like, look at that hey. cow up there that has one horn growing to the front. Wow, she wants to really mess it up. Yeah. This is about as real as it gets. These buildings have not been interpreted. These buildings have not been um, rehabbed, restored, anything. We're looking at buildings in the raw. This is the kind of thing that preservationists do. What type of activities do you suppose occurred in each of the buildings at the Colton Sheep Camp? Based on the bee sheep pens. <laughs> Very good, Jackson. <laughs> yes. Ah. Nineteen sixty three. So nineteen sixty three. More people cut. We're here in Como at the Como Roundhouse. It was built in eighteen eighty one to service the engines of the Denver South Park and Pacific Railroad. Above your head is a replica of the original depot sign. This is what hung on the depot right over there next to the hotel. What he and, and Kathy envisioned is turning this into a kind of a living working museum representative of how things were in the past. And as the doc put it, this is going to be a museum for the big toys. The little toys are going to grow in the depot, the little things that you'll see in the display case. <laughs> well, we are at the Como Elementary School and it's been reformatted, I guess, to be a community center, so, yeah. What'd you do wrong? Nothing. <laughs> we actually had 120 students in there. They decided they needed a high school. So they rolled this with logs all the way up here. It's very <coughs> seldom that you find a high school and a grade school different sizes in Colorado. And you'll see, this is in perfect shape, but it's Victorian. Hey, wow. I'm guessing a lot of kids would want to come and help make like this deck, for example, service which is projects. Yeah. probably going to fall apart after we get off of it. Like for me, like doing a service project this morning, I feel like the reason why it was so great for me to do it is because I could be out here with a bunch of people that I like talking to and people that, so like, I feel like, you know, if you can reach out to people in that sense, like if people can get involved by coming together. I think, you know, bringing people together is an important aspect. Well, um, just more about the general technology. Um, I think that a basic thing that most people know about, geocaching, they could have a geocaching site out here, but not have something that would, you know, destroy the environment or destroy the buildings, but just to get people out here to realize that there are places that still need help. And I really didn't know what sheep farming is like. So if you had a TV screen that showed what sheep farming is like, would it, like, show a video of shaving sheep? that kind of thing, see the sheep in there, I think that'd be kind of cool for the kids to see that. Well, welcome and thank you all for coming. We are delighted to welcome this distinguished panel of leaders to be able to listen to what our Youth Summit participants have learned this week and what recommendations they have. Balancing preservation and conservation with finding new uses and recycling these old buildings is very important. Being able to use the main structure and foundation from a building for a new use such as a hotel or a store or anything like that is a way of saving that building but still being able to use it to help the economy and still having it be very involved in the community. So one of the tasks we were given today at the Youth Summit was, or we were given this week at the Youth Summit, was to develop ideas that we could incorporate across multiple historic sites throughout Park County. And so that's what these representatives from each element group have done. You use the technology to bring people in 
And then you kind of keep it simple when you're where you're at. Make this like a game. And we all know Farmville. It's on Facebook and everybody loves it. And we were thinking something along the lines of like Parkville. And I also think that adding heritage tourism more into education would be a good way to get people out here who care about um, who care about the preservation of the area but also want to learn and people who would be aware and wouldn't be trying to like they're not trying to go to Disney World they're trying to learn because they'd be on like a type of a field trip style thing. Another thing I think that would be good as an example is if we can get people out to places like the M Lazy Sea Ranch and they can see that history and also see how hard these people work to make them happy. Well, I thought it was really cool when we like had the opportunity to go with like the Ute member and it was just cool how much she like led us into her life and talked to us about like their culture and then when she took us to the prayer tree and she like prayed for all of us and it just like it really impacted me because of how personal it was, I guess, and that's not an experience that you would normally get. And so I just thought that was really cool that we were given the chance to do that. My oh wow moment was uh, meeting the people of South Park and their personalities and the homeliness that they created for all of us and how it became sort of contagious. So when we were doing things like revegetating the uh, old mine for our service uh, activity, we kind of didn't mind because we knew the people around here appreciated it and our work was for good. Make your voices heard. Don't wait to be asked. You're doing some things today that are validating what we're doing in the New History Colorado Center on the education side. And it's so gratifying to hear and to see, but you guys are out ahead. And we thank you for your input. It is invaluable to all of us. Thank you.